Not enough people are using this in Airtable, triggering a webhook from a button click and launching a full automation outside of their app. Need to send data to Make, Zapier or N8N, generate a quote, a custom document, a payment link and send those to your client. Well, with Airtable and a single click of a button, you can share data across your tools, run complex automations and get more done. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help companies get set up and automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. Today, we're diving into one of the slickest ways that you can connect Airtable to the rest of your stack, webhooks triggered by Airtable buttons. Now, if you are not familiar with webhooks, a webhook is a URL endpoint that listens for data. Once it receives that data, it triggers actions to occur automatically in other tools like Slack, Google Sheets, and QuickBooks. But where does the Airtable button fit in? Well, you can create buttons in your Airtable app, and those buttons can trigger to open a URL or a webhook. When clicked, Airtable sends the related data to the endpoint, and you can automate your workflow. Okay, let's not waste any more time talking about this. Instead, let's show you how this process can both fit into your business, but more importantly, improve it. So here I have a sales pipeline tracker where our team manages the leads, quotes, proposals, etc. Now we're first going to create a button field directly in the base, and we will look at interface buttons after this. So let's scroll to the end of this and select the new column or new property. We'll select a button, of course. And what we're going to do is rather than use a static URL, we're going to use the URL formula. But First, we actually need to get our webhook. So I'm using N8N for the sake of this video. You can use Zapier, Make, Pipedream, any one of the automation platforms. The process is similar, but we know how popular N8N is currently. So we can see that we've got a webhook URL or a webhook step. This is the trigger event. This is going to launch or kick off our automated workflow. It's listening for data. Once it receives that data, things will be kicked off, but we need to set this up first. So we're going to select the modal and we'll notice we've got a production and a test URL. Let's go with the test URL so we can see how this works. Now I'm going to select to listen for test event. I'm just going to show you how web hooks actually work. I'm just going to paste this in my address bar. And I'm going to create URL parameter for name, which is equal to Alex. I'll select and hit that. And we can see the workflow has started. So if we jump back into N8N, we can see that that listening has stopped and it's been received. The query there is name and Alex. So that's how we actually pass data from Airtable to our stack through N8N. So we're jumping into the sales pipeline here and we're gonna paste our webhook URL. But because we're using a formula within our URL field, we need to clean this up. And of course, we need to bring in our dynamic data from our record. Okay, so I've included the webhook URL and I've ensured that I have encoded the lead name we're pulling from our tracker or our database and we've also included name. So I'm going to ensure that I'm listening for a test event here and I'll save that button. We've now got a button field in our base and I'm going to click the button and we can see again, workflow has started. If you have an error, it'll show there. You can lean on ChatGPT to understand it or of course, jump into the N8N help resources. But if we jump here, we'll see again, we've listened and there we can see that we've got the query John Doe, and if we jump back into the sales pipeline, we can see that there. So now we can see how we actually share data from Airtable to N8N Zapier make through a webhook URL. Now let's clean that up further, add some more data, and then look at what workflows we can build in N8N. Okay, so I jumped in, I added further URL parameters. We can see we've got name, company, the call date, count type, and so on and so forth. So we've created that bad boy. Let's now save it, waiting for that. And again, let's just test and see what data is actually correctly coming through. So if I hit the button again for John Doe, we can see workflow was started. That means it's going, all things are good, gravy. And we can see what we've got over here. John Doe, tech innovators, enterprise, da, da, da. Sweet. That's working good. Let's jump out. And now let's look at the automated workflow we can set up. Now, when might you decide to use button webhooks instead of Airtable native automations? Well, of course, there are limitations on firstly, 
what apps are available natively with Airtable, but also there are limits on what you can do with those apps. And the logic that we have within N8N is far superior to the native logic of Airtable. So here we're creating branching within N8N. You can see within the sales pipeline that we have two types of clients or accounts, enterprise and standard. Now within our workflow, we're gonna be quoting an enterprise account much higher than we are a standard. However, they might have similar problems. The difference is we're looking after much more users, much more employees. So within N8N, we can simply create a branch like we have here and set conditional logic so that those in the enterprise account type are taking on a different path to those in the standard. So here we can see we're pulling in the account type and when it is equal to enterprise, we want them to take the first path, which we'll set up. So we've set up our branching paths. We've got the if condition, which is if the account type is equal to enterprise, take that top path. If not, take that bottom path. And these are just simple codes that manipulate our data to generate a quote for the project or the job. Now, you could easily create a formula field within Airtable and do that, then bring that value into your workflow. But I just wanted to show you what is available. From here, we then create a document, which is going to be our quote proposal. That is attached to an email and then sent to our client or our lead, we then send a message to our sales channel, updating and letting them know what we've done. We then also create a charge for that client in Stripe. Now, this is something that definitely isn't possible through Airtable. So that's why I brought it in. And the final step, what we would need to do is, you're right, update Airtable. So we would just search for Airtable. We would need to verify and authorize that we are the owner. We'll update a record rather than create a new record. We're going to bring in the credentials so that we can actually authorize. And what we'll do then is update the record, let our team know a quote proposal has been sent in seven days, follow up if they haven't responded. And they've also received a Stripe payment. So let's keep an eye on that. If you're unsure where you can obtain your access token and verify your Airtable account for N8N, I've left a helpful resource in the description of this video. So check that out. Back in our Airtable base, we can see that a quote has been generated and linked to this record. And we'll also see that we have a new follow-up date a week from today where we'll be following up and ensuring that that client or that lead saw the quote and are ready to respond. So we took a look at the button field and how you can have your internal team trigger web hooks by clicking that button in the base. But what about interface buttons? And also, rather than actually sending data from a webhook button, what about receiving data? Let's take a look at these two processes. Jumping back into Airtable, here we can see the quote that was generated from our NAN automated workflow. So we want our client or our lead to be able to approve or reject this. Here we can see the status, we want that updated. So what we can do is create an interface page within our client facing interface that allows them to take a look at the details and approve it on the spot. So if we select our quote page, we add a button, and we select the configuration of the action. Currently, it is an external URL. Now, while we did use this action for the button field, we can't access a URL formula this way. And so instead, we need to run an automation natively in Airtable. So rather than go to external URL, we're gonna select run automation, and we'll have to create a new one. So we'll create a new automation, and we'll name it the quote approval flow. We'll continue in automations, and we'll take a look at how we set this up. So when a button is clicked, we want to run a script. Now we do the exact same thing that we did in our URL formula, but we paste it here. From here, all we want to do is publish our script. And now whenever that interface is accessed by our client, if they select to approve the quote, well, from there, then we send over an invoice and a contract. But what about actually pulling data into Airtable rather than sending it out? Well, that's incredibly simple. If you're using an automation platform that supports Airtable, it's really, really straightforward. All you need to do is to create a webhook like we did earlier in N8N, and we'll collect the URL. All we need to do is put in quotations, paste the URL, create the field, and click it. As usual, we know that it has run successfully because we can see workflow was started. If we jump into N8N, we won't see any data being pulled through because we didn't ask for any data. Instead, from here, we then just set up our flow. Let's say, for instance, you want to search your HubSpot for a particular client. Well, we then search HubSpot, 
bring in that app or tool, verify and connect your HubSpot account, and then use one of the actions like search for a company by domain or search contacts. Now, most likely you will want to share some data of that record, particularly the record ID or the name of the client or lead. That way it's much easier for you to update that record with the related information. Well, I hope this has been a helpful video on how you can get started with buttons to trigger webhooks and automate processes within your business. If you want to learn more or you're still undecided about which automation platform would be best for you and your team, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where our team of experts are offering a free 30 minute consultation. So book yours today.